Hello and welcome, F5 community. The time has come again for another quarterly security notification. So I'm here with Aaron Brailsford from F5 Security Incident Response Team to get all of the details about the release. Aaron? Thanks, Aubrey. Yep, that's right. So we're here to talk about the October 2022 security notification. Um, this is the fifth or sixth of our regular QSNs that uh, we moved to at the back end of last year. So I think everybody's getting used to them now. Just to give you a, a brief overview, um, disclosure began at 7 a.m. on October the 19th. That's Seattle time. So it's obviously done by the point of view that you're watching this video. Uh, the QSN schedule is always published in advance, so the date for the next QSN is now live at the article number there. We'll pop that in the description. And there is an overview article for this QSN, as there is for every QSN, that uh, will give you a rundown of everything that's included, all of the vulnerabilities we've disclosed, um, security exposures, and so on, so you can easily find impacted versions, the mitigations, and so on. There is no impact from anything we have disclosed to any of the F5 services like Distributed Cloud or ThreatStack, Silverline, um, nor is there any impact to Big IP Next, CNF, SPK, or Aspen Mesh. So some of these issues are not fixed in version 13. Um, exposure for those issues is limited to either specific configurations or platforms or is only exposed via the control planes, for which obviously a good control is to ensure you limit access to the control plane, that is TMUI, the, the web GUI, um, TMSH, and so on. Um, all mitigations are available. Obviously version 13 hits end of software development uh, December this year, December 2022. So although it is end of technical support December 2023, no vulnerability fixes or bug fixes will be made available after December. So it's a good idea if you aren't already planning to, to really plan to move to a later release. You will be able to consume fixes faster. Um, and 13 will be, as I say, end of technical support December next year. Just to give you a quick breakdown of the issues, there are no critical vulnerabilities in this QSN. So that's good news for everybody. There's nothing that uh, is an absolute showstopper in here. We do have 12 highs. Um, those are predominantly denial of service vulnerabilities. Denial of service vulnerabilities predominantly affect specific configurations. So do check to see if, it, if your configuration is impacted when you want to understand your risk. Um, as you can see, we have a, a, a coverage among a number of products here, um, mostly big IP, but we do have three Nginx vulnerabilities, and I'll talk about those in a little more detail in a couple of slides time. A couple of things that impact big IQ and a couple of things that impact F5 OS. That might be the first time you're seeing that in a QSN, so uh, check those out if you are using F5 OS. As always, if you are on the latest releases, uh, any of the latest releases at the point the QSN is published, you're in a good spot. Um, with the exception, as we talked about, of version 13, which only has some of the fixes for this QSN. But if you're on any of the versions on screen, you're in a very good place. Um, obviously, do check through just to make sure, especially if you're on version 13. Um, or Big IQ, I think 8201 for Big IQ fixes some, but not all of the Big IQ impacts here. F5OS, if you're on 1.2 or later, or 1.5 or later for F5OS A or C, you're in a good spot. Um, Nginx here is the first time I think we've had to talk about this. Um, these are the latest releases in each of the latest branches. There are actually fixes in Nginx uh, 1.21, I believe, for Nginx open source and R26 for plus and R1 for OSS subscription, just in case you're in it on any of those. For Nginx, it is a good idea to try and be on the latest branch if you can. So just to highlight those Nginx issues for a second, there are three Nginx issues. Two are reported to us by an external researcher 
One was discovered internally. They are limited to a very specific configuration. So they only impact the MP4 module and the HLS module. Um, those modules, HLS is unavailable on Open Source Nginx, so you're definitely not impacted if you are running open source. Um, MP4 is available, but is not enabled by default. And, and in Nginx parlance, enabled actually means compiled into the Nginx that you're running. In any case, uh, while those modules are compiled into Nginx Plus and OSS subscription, they are only in use if you actually have them referenced in your configuration files. So there are examples in the security advisories that you can go and look at to quickly determine whether you are or aren't actually using that functionality. And in both cases, for the MP4 module and the HLS module, you're only impacted if you are serving um, potentially maliciously crafted uh, MOV or MP4 files, so H.264, um, for example, files that are stored on your server that you are streaming out to remote clients. As long as your content is trusted, then you are also not exposed. But if your content is potentially untrusted and you are using these modules, um, and you have them configured in your configuration files, you're potentially exposed. So do check out the security advisories for those if you fall into any of those camps. And that is it. That is all we had this QSN. Like I say, it's it's not a big QSN. There are no criticals, so there's no huge showstoppers in there. There are a few things to be aware of, um, like you know, if you're on 13X, maybe pay special attention to those. If you are running Nginx, then pay uh, special attention to those. Just take a look at the advisories. But other than that, uh, it should be a quiet one for everybody, I hope. Thanks, as always, Aaron, for delivering the news to us uh, on this quarterly security notification. And thank you, F5 community, for tuning in. Have a great F5 day.